going to be answering the question, did Jesus descend into hell? And I've been asked this question many times over the years, and I think the reason people ask this question, and maybe you've asked it or thought about it yourself, is not related really to what the Bible teaches, but to one of the most uh, known creeds of the church, both the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, and Protestant churches. Uh, many of you probably grew up in a church that um, would say the Apostles' Creed during the liturgy. And that's where this idea of Jesus descending into hell comes from, the Apostles' Creed. So I just want you to know off the bat that whenever we do some kind of tradition, it's important to always ask, is that tradition taught in the scriptures? And so right off the bat, I just want you to know that there is no clear passage in scripture that teaches that Jesus descended into hell. There's five passages that are used to substantiate the claim that Jesus did descend into hell after his death. And those five passages are Acts 2.27, Romans 10, 6, and 7, Ephesians 4, 8, and 9, 1 Peter 3, 18 through 20, and 1 Peter 4 to 6. And I'm not going to take the time to go through all these passages and how they can be interpreted, interpreted properly, but I do want to say this, that if you read those passages and you read them in the context, none of them state specifically that Jesus descended into hell. They often use the term Hades, or Sheol, which would be the Hebrew equivalent of Hades, and that is just the place of the departed. It's not the final state of the wicked, which would be hell, and that is often used by the Greek word Gehenna. So Gehenna is not used in any of these five passages. And that gets back to the development of the Apostles' Creed. First of all, the Apostles' Creed was not written by the Apostles, and the Apostles' Creed was not written by any of the disciples of the Apostles. The final version of the Apostles' Creed came about in about A.D. 650, and Rufinus, who was sort of uh, very much involved in developing the Apostles' Creed, uh, didn't even interpret that saying in the Apostles' Creed that says that Christ was crucified, dead, and buried, and he descended into hell, and the third day rose again from the grave, which creeds were primarily written for believers to be able to recite the main succinct doctrines that all Christians believe in. But that phrase was not interpreted by Rufinus himself, who finalized the creed in 650 AD as Jesus descending into hell, but into Hades. And so what does Hades mean? It means that Jesus was buried and he was in a tomb, he was entombed, and his body was there until the resurrection three days later. But his spirit, did it go to hell? And the answer is, biblically, no. He did not go to hell. So, uh, so, the, so the bottom line is, did Jesus descend into hell? There is no biblical evidence for it. The phrase itself in the Apostles' Creed was not to be uh, interpreted as hell, the final place of the wicked, but of Hades, that he descended into Hades, that he was in the grave. And that's the way Sheol and Hades are interpreted. And then there's just three things I want to say that, that also not only does any biblical text say that he went to hell, but also there's three texts that stand out to me that say otherwise. For instance, Jesus on the cross to one of, uh, to one of the people on his, on his right and left, to the one he said, today you will be with me in paradise. So that means that Jesus' soul and the soul of, of the one who believed on Christ would meet together in paradise. And paradise is only used two other times in the New Testament. Both of those times, including this one, is talking about heaven, that his soul would leave the body and go to be in the presence of God. And Jesus said, today that will happen. So when would he have gone to hell and for what purpose? And again, it's not even a biblical concept. Two other 
uh, things that are worth mentioning is Jesus on the cross in John 1930 cried out that it is finished. What was finished? Well, his punishment for our sins on the cross, he didn't need to be further punished in hell for us. And again, that's nowhere stated in the New Testament. And then also Jesus said on the cross, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So Luke 23, 46 suggests that Jesus expected to be immediately uh, in the presence of God upon death, that his soul would go to be with the Father. So it's my contention and my conclusion that one of the reasons that we as a church do not recite the Apostles' Creed is if we did, we would have to leave out this phrase because it's been done traditionally for many years since 650 AD, but a mistake in 650 AD is still a mistake in 2021. And so why do we do what we do and why do we believe what we believe? We believe it because the Bible is clear on it. And when it's unclear or when something is taught that seems to deny the teaching, we would say absolute, with absolute certainty that Jesus did not descend into hell, that his spirit upon death went to be with his father. And then when he was resurrected, he was on earth for 40 days and then ultimately ascended to heaven. There was no purpose for Jesus to go to hell. He's faced all the punishment he needed to for our sins uh, on the cross, and that satisfied God's wrath, God's anger towards our sin. Jesus paid it all, and he could say, it is finished. And so let's leave that if we're gonna use the Apostles' Creed out of the creed, or at least say he descended into Hades, which is true, but that he descended into hell is false.